and I'm the running so-and-so. And thank you so much for those lovely comments I'm getting on last week's vlog. This is Monday, I only put it up last night. I can't believe how many of you have seen it. How oh, such wonderful comments. The best thing that's happened today, well, two things happened today. First of all, we went on to lateral flow COVID tests at work. Great. If anybody's had a COVID test, you'll know exactly what I've got to do. I don't mind the nose bit, but the mouth, back of the mouth bit, oh, no way. No way. Anyhow, I was negative. The other thing was, I found a water leak at school. I've never seen the head teacher and myself move so quickly. He went outside to check the water leak and I was a small person shot into the sink to turn off the stopcock. <laughs> Anyhow, yes, we spotted a water leak and I did get very wet. And the head teacher did think it was rather funny and I said, well, um, I'm okay now, just a bit. He said, was I okay? And I said, yeah, I'm just a little bit wet because I actually found it and did try and turn it off at the tap just in case the tap had turned on miraculously, but it hadn't. There was a plastic pipe that had cracked. Anyhow. These light-hearted things have to happen at these times to make us laugh. And in the process, I managed to whack my hand on the hot water stopcock lever as I tried to turn the cold water on. Right. Tonight, I am going to go on a crowd cast. Um, as I said yesterday, I've signed up as a Patreon for, the, for Gertie, who Gertie actually runs charm patterns as well. But there's a crowd cast. Now, I've never done a crowd cast before and I thought, well, in for a penny, in for a pound, I have said. This is my journey into 21st century technology, so let's do a crowd cast. It is at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, which is 10 o'clock UK time, Greenwich Mean Time. Thankfully, I'm not at work tomorrow, so I am allowed to have a bit of a sleep in. But before then, I'm going to make a little bit more bias binding. I'm going to not necessarily put you on time lapse with what I'm doing with the sewing machine because I actually want to talk through how I'm doing this binding and why I've changed why I have changed my mind now before I go any further these pieces are approximately one inch across that was the size of the pattern piece that I cut out it then had to be folded over and turned round so my theory is to do it as bias binding Fold it in on itself, as so, and sew it down. There we go, we might get a better one. Fold the binding in half and then sew it down with a top stitch. And to do that successfully on the sewing machine, I'm going to use my straight stitch plate. And that's what I'd like to get done tonight. Using my bias binding maker, is just here it is the wide one and I've actually got this the fabric is cut at two and a quarter inches <laughs> I've gone back to my childhood I've done this in inches it's because my cutting boards in inches and I think this thing this thing might be in inches as well no it's not it's in centimeters it's two and a half trial and error can't go wrong. So let's turn this camera down and let's show you what I'm up to. By the way, I've come in from work and I'm still cold. And I actually wore my emo top again today to school. And the children thought, the children saw it and they said, Mrs. Watson, we love your top. I have, I'd love to have one of those little Oscillo craft irons. This is just the cheapest craft iron I could get. I think this one came from Dunelm. It's by Russell Hobbs, it's a travel iron. It's brilliant for the kitchen. I can put it on a tea towel, protects the work surface. My work surface is granite, but it will protect my work surface and I can carry on with my sewing. So let me just try and get you a bit more focus down to where I am. You can see what I'm doing, I'm sure. Well, I do hope that all these demonstrations and all this sewing, practical sewing that I do is what you want to see. I just think if I'm doing a a YouTube vlog. I need to show you what I'm doing. Okay. So what I've done is I've fed it through and I've used this. Lots of people have got different, um, an awl is a name for it, uh, a pointer. I call it a stiletto. That's what I was taught when I was doing embroidery in school. 
because I have a, I have a, an A level in embroidery. I think I might need to move you a bit closer. Now, I wish to goodness I'd actually ordered the um, binding ready-made from Atelier Brunette. I think it would have been an awful lot easier. Um, I've had it said that I'm very patient by one or two people. Um, I've had to learn to be patient. Patience isn't something that comes naturally. Um, but I have persisted at being a patient person. Please may I apologise for the background noises. That's Poppy Ma growling at Maggie and I don't know why she's growling at her. Cheeky dog. Poppy, you're coming out on YouTube and you're, you're growling at Maggie on YouTube and I don't like it. It's not how to make friends and influence people, Poppy. I'm just going to pull you forward so you can see that bit that I'm just doing now. There's this bit here. It's coming out perfectly and I really hope that you can see that. Yes, you can. That's coming out really well. I don't think I need to do much more. What I haven't done is to join these. And the reason I've not joined all the pieces I've done, the reason I didn't join the lengths before I tried to pull it through the binding maker it's a six and two threes. Yes, it's quicker if you join it first. But you do get a lump and sometimes the sort of the fold that you iron down isn't quite as accurate. And see, I've got a little bit here that's not very accurate. Oh, where's it gone? Just there. It's not particularly accurate. There you are just here where that little flower is. So I'm just going to iron that down now. Just going to pull it over and iron it to where it should be so that this works. I've got, I've got two more shorter pieces should I need them. But I don't think I will. I'm going to put this longer one through. This one here went through yesterday and it's wants to go through a little bit more there. Viscose is the most it's it's a lovely fabric to work with. Oh but it's 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 heavy and it's very slippery. Right. Let's see if I can show you this one again without burning my hand as I do it. So it goes into the the fabric goes in to this wide end here. It's a knack, watch it take forever to go through just because I'm now filming it. And you use the little pointy bit here, goes in this gap here, where it is now, goes in that gap and you pull it through and eventually, ah, oh, it has, it's come out the bottom. And again, use a little pointer to hold it down. And as it comes through, it should take the shape of the binding but I am oh there we go don't be worried you know that as you saw me there the fabric didn't come through perfect the first time and it's just a little gentle tweak you know with your with your stiletto your all or just with your fingers and then the idea is that you can pull it through now as it came through then it twisted very very slightly and this is what you have to be careful for if you're using one of these with a cotton fabric, it's absolutely fantastic. It will go through beautifully. Um, but this viscose, and it's now come to the end of my tea towel, which is my makeshift dining board. One thing you will realise with me is that uh, I do make do. Um, and quite practical. I've had to learn to be. I remember once with these wrists that I talked to you about a while ago. I went to the doctors and the first time they were like, we don't know what you've done. We've no idea what you've, be what you've done to have caused this problem to your wrists. Have you done anything different? Well, they knew that David had died, obviously, because they're our local doctor's practice. 
And I said, well, I have been using power tools. And they said, well, perhaps that's not such a good idea to start doing at your age. And I was only 46. I was I 47 at that? I 47 by that time. But yes, you know, the hedge needed cutting, so I got out David's hedge cutters and I used them because the hedge needed cutting. And then I paid somebody to come and lower the hedge so it was easier because the hedge was too high and I couldn't get to the top. I didn't want to impose on my child, my son to do all these things because it wasn't fair on him. He'd, you know, he'd just gone off to university and he did carry on going to university. He didn't stop. He went to university, which was probably the best thing for him. And I didn't want him to have to take on that responsibility. It wasn't, in my eyes, it wasn't fair. Other people might have had different things. So there we go. So that's the first bit done. So I'm going to stop the filming and I shall be back in a second. Right, ready to do the next bit. Before I do, I'm just going to show you one or two things that I need to do before I can actually start. So the first thing I need to do is to change the foot plate on my machine. Um, and I have the plate that we use for the embroidery. So my machine has a very wide width. Can you see there? That's the plate that you normally use. And this bit where my finger has just touched, that is the, indicates the swing of the machine needle. Now, if I was going to put my binding through it, my binding is just about that width. And I did try with the binding that came with, with the garment and even just folding it over, ready to pull it through. And I was trying to sew in some cord to use as a pull through rather than a turner. I was pulling the tie through that. So I'm going to change and I'm going to use the plate that I use for embroidery which is this with just a hole in it. It is also known as the straight stitch plate. So I'm going to put this into my sewing machine and it will help with the more accuracy and fluid movement of the work. So what I have done is I have replaced the, the foot plate. Let's push that in. I've actually got you stuck on my lap. So what I have to do now with my machine is I need to tell it what I've done and I have changed the foot plate to this one. So it now knows that I cannot swing the needle. If I tried to tell it I wanted to do a zigzag, it will not, and I'm moving the zigzag thing, it will not allow me to do a zigzag because it knows that I have the straight stitch plate. Okay. The other thing I have here is a foot and a, I have a built-in differential feed on my machine. And if I engage this onto this particular foot, it feeds the work more steadily through the sewing machine. Now, I've done the first one. I wanted just to do one off the camera to make certain it was right. So I've sewn it across, I've trimmed it, and when you come to fold it back on itself, what I will do is just to slip a pin in here like this, I won't, I, I won't open that flat. I will open that like that and literally just then, if I did decide to open it flat, I would finger press it and fold it across like so and then it is ready to sew up. Like that, I hope the lighting is okay. Well, that's better, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the next one while I'm with you. So what I did was, when I put these together, they go perpendicular to each other. And if you already know how to do this, I'm really sorry. It's just simple joining of binding. So I will then open it out and slip it into my machine. As I've said to you before, I use a longer stitch. Sorry for my hands being in the way. I'll just move the camera around so you can see a little better. Oh, it's all right. There you go. Sew across. Slow and steady is the way always. Always slow and steady. Straight across. Quick finish. And before I trim it, 
I will check it. It's fine. They do go out of alignment slightly, but do not worry because you still have the material there to, you still have the material there to actually even off. So, Tuesday morning, no work on a Tuesday morning. Somebody else doesn't have work on a Tuesday morning, do you? She's ignoring me. So, here we are on the railway line. I don't know how far we've done already, Rachel. 5.3k. Brilliant. It's absolutely glorious. This was the old East Coast main line. From York to London needs to go through Selby and uh, we've got the dogs one each and uh, having a wonderful time it's absolutely glorious so Rachel has very heroically <laughs> broken the ice with the dogs and managed to get a wet foot in the process yeah. we've got Poppy in a coat simply because she gets so cold um, but she does like drinking don't you you're gonna go and have a skate now are you ready? You're going to wrap up Rachel? There you go. We're coming to the end of our run today. She's pushing me. I'm getting there. You are. And here are the snowdrops, aren't they? Just They're just really taking off into that little area there. And into here. And look at that. I'll just zoom in. Poppy, just, I know you want to chase Maggie. Look at it in there. It's just all taking through. I, sh I should put in a little sign later that day. So back from the run with Rachel. Lunch, I've done, I've just done a little bit of research about something which I'm planning on vlogging about. I'm not going to say when, but following the most amazing crowd cast with Gertie last night. It was fantastic just to think there were at one point nearly 250 people on that crowd cast from all over the world. It was just amazing. And then she talked about her inspiration for the pattern, <laughs> not how to make it. It was really a historical sewing lecture. It was just phenomenal. It was well worth staying up for. And if I could justify staying up for her Zoom circle sewing meeting on Thursday evening, I would do but I'm at work on Friday. But today I want to finish the Amaret dress and then I want to post the vlog because I've checked my footage and I've got a lot to put on already. So as I've said, I'm going to post whenever I've got something to post and it will be at least once a week because I'm enjoying this so much. I really, really am. Now, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial it wasn't meant to be a tutorial on using your binding maker. Mine just came off Amazon. Just pop in bias binding maker on Amazon on any of your sewing shops that you prefer to go to and you will find one. I've had that little set for quite a while. So my aim is to get the dress finished to the extent that I can go upstairs and use my hot hammer. I'm going to sew up the sides. I know exactly where the, bind, the binding goes. I've got the binding here, but I'm, I'm stood up at my overlocker. It's brilliant for my legs because now I'm bending my knees to talk to you, but it's great because I'm also bending my ankle and that's really good exercise. But viscose, it's so heavy, isn't it? How many, how many else of you find viscose heavy? I'm going to I'm going to say it again it's slow and steady all the time you're slow and steady you're less likely to make a mistake less likely to cut the fabric unnecessarily and just to reiterate why I'm using the overlocker it's because it's a viscose it is fraying I don't know if you can see that let me just try and zoom you in a little bit it's already fraying at the edges here 
I didn't want to do um, a French seam. I wanted to do, I wanted to use my overlocker because I want to get much more efficient at using it. the hem for the amorette dress I'm going to stick you on time lapse and I'm going to finish off the dress but before I do I turned up the hem of the dress using the hot hemmer now this is the hot hemmer uh, if you've never used one and you are like I was and you still used a, a, a tape measure ditch it get yourself one of these because what you do is you put in it under the fabric and turn the fabric up to the desired I'm just putting it into the fabric let me show you <laughs> like this oh it's amazing and there's a line on there which you iron it up to and it gives you the perfect hem I love it I absolutely love it this one is by Clover as you know I adore Clover and I think Prim do one as well so I have turned the hem up and I've turned it over twice but before I do that, I'm just going to show you one of the best things about my sewing machine. What I like about the Benina is the free arm, and the free arm is here. Look at that, I've got the camera in my hand. You can see the area here, and the idea is that you can sew a cuff. I should put the cuff back on in a minute, but before I start, I've still got the stitch plate with the hole in it. I need to re-remind the sewing machine it's remembered that I've still got the stitch plate with a hole in it. I've put the stitch um, length up and I have the differential feed engaged into the foot. Like so. And it will, you can sew it round just in, an, in, just in one straight big go. So what I will do is I will do this one in real time. And this is the reason why I went Benina. It's all the Beninas do still have this amazing free arm. My the ones I had in school had them, and my mother's Benina 801 record has one. Uh, that same machine that was my mother's bought in oh, when was it bought? 1980, no, 1980, because mine was born in 79, and it wasn't long after that that my dad went out and bought one for my mother as well because he wanted me to have the Benina 801 and I wanted the Elna Lotus. And that machine is still going. I lost my mother in 1995 to, oh, thank you sewing machine, I didn't ask you to stop. Um, in 1995 to pancreatic cancer. And my dad gave her sewing machine to the daughter of some friends of mine, which I thought was absolutely lovely. So I've just put my Amorette dress on and I'm so happy. Really, really pleased with it. I'm, I'm not very good at sitting here and doing the twirls, but here we go, woo, going round. Um, on, in my hallway, I should have waited till Hannah came, but I was so excited. I just wanted to put it on and show you. Look, it's got these 1970s back wing sleeves, but look at this. It lies so flat across my chest. I've got no, I haven't got much up there. So to have a wrap dress with no gaping and it, the beautiful little rolled hem seam that I did has sat superbly. So I'm really, really happy. I'll try and do another little... Run. I've got my jog, my running leggings on still, I'm really sorry. And it's probably holding still, but there's the back. So happy with it. Actually makes my bottom look quite flat, so I'm really pleased. The back wing sleeve again, simple cuff. And this Atelier Brunette fabric is utterly to die for. I'm really, really happy with that. Really happy with it. When I'm gonna wear a dress, I don't, again, I don't know. So as I say, I am going to do a 
pattern review on it because as I say I am I keep saying it I am really really happy with it I've never had a wrap dress before this is as I said when I started this way out of my comfort zone I'm going to review it it definitely needs a review because it lies flat perfectly there that's it but I just want to say you know highlight some of the things that I did from the pattern and things that I changed and things that I would probably do if I made the pattern again I really am so excited I said that it could be another week till I uploaded a video, but here we are two days later and I'm uploading another one. I've really enjoyed making my amaret dress and I'm going to try and do the review for it in the next week. It is the amaret dress by Singulaire Patterns. It's just here. I will link it in the description box below. It is a very straightforward wrap dress, but the instructions are in French. So I have had to fumble my way a little bit. I have discovered a few, as I've said, there's a few things I'm going to improve, but for now I'm going to stop. Tomorrow morning I'm going to try and make a Sheridan sweater. And then there's more running and working and I've got a wedding dress to alter, just got to take it up as I said earlier. And I think I'll have another video lay out later in the week. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a, t a taster here to leave you dangling. I'm going to do a review on some tops. It follows on from something I heard on the Gertie thing last night and I am going to do some tops. I'm going to do them, make brand new ones. I'm going to make four tops all in a similar style of fabric all meeting a similar perspective. All I'm going to say is they are based on my utter fascination Coco Chanel. I adore Chanel. I adore her line, her cut and even her philosophy. I read something earlier. Dress badly and they'll remember the dress. Dress well and they'll remember the woman. So a little bit of Chanel-esque inspiration and no it's not a jacket. My inspiration for my tops is coming from Chanel. And it'll also be some pattern reviews. What do you think? Do you know what it is? It's the camellia. Chanel loved the camellia. I've done reading into Chanel and for some reason in the past 24 hours my obsession with Chanel has been rekindled. I'm going to say goodbye. I'll see you soon. Bye.